I'm Judy Shaw for NYC Food Talk. Joining me today is Christina Shim. She is VP, Global Head of Product Management and Strategy at IBM Sustainability Software. Christina, it is wonderful to have you here. Thanks for joining me Thank today. Thank you for having me, Judy. I love to be here. My pleasure. So now, Christina, tell me, why should companies care about sustainability? Judy, great question. Sustainability is really important for a couple reasons. So one, everybody's experiencing the extreme weather all around the world. We're hearing about it almost on the daily, unfortunately. There were the hottest days on record this past summer and over $23 billion climate-related weather disasters. It's affecting people, communities, businesses. It's affecting everybody. So just from a business operational perspective and a risk perspective, businesses have to manage. How do I think about extreme weather and climate change and all of that as it relates to my business, my supply chain, my employees, my communities? On top of that, regulations are coming into play, right? And so businesses have to comply with the regulations that are coming out in the EU and in the US and elsewhere around the world. So that's something that they have to deal with, even if they don't want to incorporate it as part of their business operations, they have to deal with it from a compliance perspective. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I mean, it's really, it's good business actually. So over 80% of CEOs that we interviewed and surveyed over the last year shared that they recognized that sustainability was good for their business over the next five years. It was an investment that they were willing to focus on for that purpose. So for those three reasons, sustainability is just really critical as an imperative for businesses these days. Mm -hmm. So now, Christina, you mentioned regulation across the world. Yeah. Um, for large global companies, it can be hard to even know where to start on this. What's the first step? Data. Data is the first step. The biggest challenge that we talk to all of our partners and customers around the world on is how to start, understand the baseline of where you are, and then decide how you need to get to where you need to get to. And all of that is underpinned by data. The challenge of accessing the data, understanding what kind of data is actually important, and then being able to do some analytics and understand what your sustainability posture is, how that fits in with your business, and what to do to achieve the goals that you need to achieve. And so our IBM Invisi tool actually helps with that data management, the aggregation, the reporting of it to fit those compliance regulatory requirements. And that's really critical because otherwise, unfortunately, a lot of companies are still using spreadsheets to try to figure out how to do this manually. And there's no way we're gonna get to the goals that we need to get to in this world and the way that companies need to start thinking about compliance by using spreadsheets. So technology like Invisi really enables companies to manage that number one challenge, which is data. All right, so you mentioned Invisi. Um, how else is technology playing a role in this space? Yeah, so Invisi is a really interesting technology platform. It provides GHG emissions calculations. It provides that data aggregation, the collection, and the insights and the analytics around that. And increasingly, Judy, you know, everybody's talking about generative AI and what that means. Uh, we were really excited. AI has already been embedded into NVIDI, supporting with GHG, GHG emissions calculations. And this past week, we announced in a press release that we are also providing natural language processing for their AI embedding that provides um, categorization of spend data. So this is where companies can actually use financial data, existing financial and ERP data to get a sense for their scope three emissions, which is the, one of the biggest challenges that organizations and businesses have today. And so AI is going to continue to play an increasing role and we're really excited about the way that it's helping and enabling our partners and customers to use Invisi to help them with their challenges. All right, and finally, it's UN Climate Week here in New York. Yes. Tell me, how is IBM participating? Ooh, we are participating across the board. Uh, we had a wonderful event last night, actually, where Secretary Kerry came to join, as well as Administrator Reagan from the EPA. Um, I was on a panel also with, um, with the Biden's Chief Sustainability Officer, uh, and, uh, and it was an amazing discussion about, you know, what can we be optimistic about, and what do we need to still continue to work on, and where are we? How does IRA change things? How does the policy world change how we're thinking about this problem? How does business, science, researchers, how do we all come together and collaborate around this? So that's been amazing. We also announced that we are one of the first technology sponsors for COP28, which is happening later this year in Dubai. That's another place where we're really focusing on collaboration across sectors. Um, and there's been a lot of great conversations across Climate Week with lots of different partners and customers on how we can further help them accelerate using tools like Invisi along their sustainability journey. So it's been an amazing week. It's not over yet. There's still a lot more to go. Um, but you know, I think there's reason to be optimistic that technology can help us get to where we need to faster because everybody knows that we're not getting there as quickly as we need to and enterprises and businesses and organizations need to do that. So we're happy to be a partner as we all are going along on this journey. All right. Yeah. 
Well, Christina, it's been wonderful to talk with you. Yes, thank you, Judy. Same here. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.